Hi, everyone. Welcome to Orthopod. I'm here with some longtime colleagues and friends, a Professor Yoshi Watanabe from Teiko University uh, and Dr. Natsumi Saka, also uh, working with an affiliated hospital at Teiko University. Hello, both of you. It's been a long time, but uh, I'm very, very glad to be chatting again. Long time, no see. <laughs> it's been a long time, no see. So, so l let me ask you, if I may, Yoshi, um, what has been the situation of for Japan. So how how uh, difficult has the situation been with respect to COVID? For example, um, you know, we are at many, many millions of cases around the world, many hundreds of thousands of deaths around the world. How has and Japan handled things? I, I have the data here. Yes. And uh, as you know, in Japan now, on the 4th June, and uh, in Japan, uh, the the pandemic is not um, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, PCR confirmed patient is about uh, sixteen thousand or seventeen thousand. Yeah. Okay. And uh, about ninety percent of uh, cases was re already recovered, and uh, the numbers of deaths is uh, uh, less than the one thousand. Yes. So I think the, it is it, it not a very bad situation in Japan. When uh, COVID-19 was uh, legally designated as a special infection disease, yes. all PCR positive patients, including mild and asymptomatic patients, were uh, required to be admitted to the hospital designed wow. for infection disease. So at such hospital, dealing with the COVID-19 patients left them uh, unable to treat other patients. Subsequently, the government uh, instructed that mild and asymptomatic patients do not necessarily need to be treated at the uh, hospital designed for infection disease. Therefore, with the expect, uh, exception of some hospital, the medical situation was not as urgent as is seen in Western country, European and uh, North American and United States. And the epidorm, uh, epi, epidemiological infection yes. disease has appear, appealed to the government that the same outbreak in Italy will securely occur in Japan two weeks later. Right. The government has uh, contacted major hospital to secure access the bed for COVID-19 patient. Our university hospital has about uh, about a uh, thousand bed. And during the early stage of the infection spread, uh, we were asked to reserve the 30 bed for COVID-19 in our hospitals. This number was uh, moderate in Tokyo and was neither large or, nor small. I think that many hospitals had a policy of discontinuing uh, other, other than emergency surgery. This is because the anesthesiologist must work to control the ventilator of serious COVID-19 patient. Orthopedic surgery quotas were limited to half the usual amount, but uh, knee and hip joint surgery and spinal surgery continue to be performed within that limit in our hospitals. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Our trauma center is similar with reduced surgical quotas uh, due to the characteristic of our center, we accepted all cases of the open fracture, all cases of the pelvic fracture, and all cases of whatever fracture in all cases in Tokyo. Uh, if possible, so-called fragility fracture and common fracture were taken care of our community hospitals. And the, yes. That's it's, it's fascinating. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so let, let me ask you, uh, if I may, uh, Natsumi, um, yes. What do you th what do you think is going to happen? So as uh, Japan is reopening, you know, you are getting mm -hmm. back to doing more and more cases. Is yes. there any fear that there may be a second wave around the world? There is a very big concern mm -hmm. that as soon as you open everything, there will be a second wave of infections. Is there been any concern around possibly more infections coming back in a second wave in Japan as you begin um, to open up the economy and do mm -hmm. all the things that? Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, we we all concerned about it, and actually, in um, on May twenty fifth, uh, Japanese government has lifted the uh, lifted the emergency statement. 
So mm. everything is opening up again from June. Right. And um, actually, in April 10th, um, Japanese Orthopedic Association, uh, Japanese uh, JOA, has published a guideline to selecting which surgery has to be stopped uh, with other surgical association. So and their recommendation was mainly based on the already published guideline from the states. So after that, in April, we had a big increase of the COVID-19 cases all over yes. Japan. So some hospital, including the major medical center in Tokyo and the university hospital experienced the outbreak of COVID-19 and had to shut down the clinic, including the emergency room. Wow. Um, and some hospital, especially designate, designated hospital uh, for uh, COVID, had to yes. stop the elective surgery. Uh, but um, although there is a recommendation from the JOA, uh, yes. there is a hospital which did not stop the uh, elective surgery, mm. uh, especially in the area where the prevalence of COVID-19 is low. Yes. So I guess in those areas, elective surgery has been performed. And you, right now... <laughs> no, go ahead, please. Uh, ah, sorry. So right now, there is a continuous decrease of the cases. And on May 5th, uh, Japanese government has... Um, so JOA has again published a recommendation guideline for restarting the elective surgery. So oh, okay. They, they have, yeah, so they have stated that if there is a conscious decrease of the cases of COVID-19, and if the hospital are well prepared for the possible cover, um, cover for the cases mm -hmm. such as PPE. Yeah. Um, so I think, um, yeah, reopening will affect the situation of the. Um, uh, the infection rate of COVID-19, but it's. Uh, so that even in a pandemic in April and May, the situation was a bit different from the uh, other uh, other states like uh, United States or Canada. Uh, so the difference will be a bit smaller compared right. to other countries. And well, just yesterday, uh, JOA has published a survey among Japanese surgeons mm -hmm. about uh, how they are doing under the COVID. COVID period. It included answer from 220 surgeons. Yes. By that survey, 43% uh, of the surgeons have experienced the 30 to 40% of the decrease by uh, decrease of the all surgical cases. Whereas actually 17 cases of the surgeon did not feel any difference in terms of the number of the surgeries. Um, why do you so, think that is? I mean, wh why do you think so? Is it is it just because um, there are places in Japan that did not have much of any COVID and therefore the mm -hmm. hospitals ran just normally? Uh, well, that, of course, that's one of the cases. That's one mm -hmm. of the reason, I guess. But um, another reason is um, whether you it is a public hospital or a private hospital. Japanese hospital is largely managed by the investment from the medical insurance. Yes. And if they decrease the cases, it means the hospital will face a financial problem. Okay. So probably that's why they, um, so, and especially under the COVID-19, they have to buy a lot of face masks and PPE. Yeah. Yes. And I think that's one of, one of the reasons why they are not restricting the, um, uh, elective surgery cases. Ah, it's interesting. So let me ask you this, Yoshi, then. I'm going to flip back to you to ask you this question. How long do you think this will take before things are back to pre-COVID or back to normal, as we would say? Is this uh, a, a months, maybe years? What do you think? Very difficult. Nobody knows. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. I I, I hope it will settle within uh, uh, three or six months. Yes, yes. Yeah, you know, we have been thinking in Canada that it's probably, probably between 11 months and maybe 1.5 years, depending on what happens. Because everywhere in the world, um, someone, you know, there's a new epicenter. So now suddenly the World Health Organization, as you may know, has said South America has become the new mm -hmm. epicenter. So now there's another big push. 
The one thing that um, I have seen lots of data on recently from many, many people I've been speaking with has been one strategy has been really extreme physical distancing um, policies. So data comes out and says the only way to really, really stop this is to almost get to a point where you're into quarantines and you're basically, you know, you're putting what we call lockdown. Did Japan do a lockdown or did Japan not, like how did they handle the initial wave? What were what were the criteria to tell people, okay, were, how much were they distancing? Were you using masks? What were the other things that were being told to control the virus? Before COVID-19, uh, most Japanese uh, put on their mask during yes, the uh, yes, yes, winter, yes. as you know, yes, yes. and yes, yes. Uh, we have uh, uh, already take a social distance uh, in Japan, right? Yes, 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 right. Culturally, I think already there is a lot of, of space, right? You don't, yeah. It's one of the reasons why the uh, Japanese COVID-19 is not so severe, I think. Yes, yes. Do you, did you have any lockdown measure or well, what was the measure? Were schools open or what, what, what were some of the other things that were happening in the stores closed, everything? Uh, well, it's it's not a complete lockdown like in the okay. United States. Yes. Uh, schools are closed. Uh, yes. They have moved to some of the schools have moved to online online uh, schooling. Yes. And uh, uh, well, actually, Japanese uh, at first Japanese strategy is uh, to form the cluster response team. Uh, so they uh, the public health center uh, mm. identify the small scale cluster of COVID-19 to prevent yes. the spread of the diseases. So by their analysis, they have identified uh, three seeds, uh, oh, so that okay. is uh, avoid closed spaces, mm -hmm. uh, crowded places, mm -hmm. and closed contact settings. So that is the three seeds. Three and okay. the government, government has advertised for the people uh, to avoid three seeds. So as long as it's not three seats. Uh, after you can um, at least around your home, uh, you can go out. So yes, yes, yes. Uh, yes. Even in the uh, severest period, I can go running uh, around my house. Yes. So it's basically stay home tactics, uh, but it's not as severe as in other countries. So some restaurants are open. Mm -hmm. Of course, gym and theaters have closed. Okay. So it's a minor restriction. Can you remind us again? So what are the three C's? I want to I want to make sure we emphasize that. I think that's a very important statement. Uh, three C's is uh, closed spaces with closed space. poor ventilation and yes. crowded places with crowded many places. people nearby yep. and closed contact setting, uh, oh, such as uh, like closed trend conversation. So very good, very good, very good. And okay, yeah, so. So one thing that is very unique about what you both are telling me is that around the world, very few places are being able to get the elective orthopedic surgery started, specifically hip and knee surgery. For example, in Canada, very, very unlikely that hip and knee arthroplasty type surgery will ever proceed um, in a, you know, in a pre-COVID way for many, many months, maybe, maybe possibly much longer than that. We're seeing the same thing in the US and we're seeing the same thing across Europe. Very few cases are being done. Um, is that, I mean, it's very, it's actually very positive to hear that, you know, that elective surgery and orthopedics has resumed. Um, is it, how common is it? I guess my question is, is it just a few centers, Yoshi, that are doing elective surgery or, or are there many more centers in Japan opening up elective surgery? In Japan, there is many hospitals, many hospitals, many small and uh, hospitals, and yes. uh, also Prasti was, uh, I think, the uh, performed in uh, many, many, many hospitals, right? Yes. And not yes. only for the uh, also plastic center, but yes. also very small, even for the very small hospital, uh, did do the. Uh, or surplusity uh, for 100 cases a year. Yeah. So it uh, it uh, the patient to wait or not to wait for surgery is depend on the hospital. I think. How about how do you think, uh, Natsumi? <laughs> uh, well, 
as I said, um, as I said before, by the result of the survey by JOA, 17% yes, yes. of the surgeon did not feel any difference. And right now, I'm working, yeah, right now I'm working in the community-based hospital, which is yes. an affiliated hospital of my university. And actually today I have checked the number of the cases. Yes. And uh, for the Toronto cases, there were there was uh, so compared to the uh, April and May in 2019, I mean the last year, there was a 25 decrease of the trauma cases. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, but actually, the number of the elective surgery case is not so different. Wow, that's great. Really really yeah. So, <laughs> now, last week so we started the. Uh, same level of uh, surgery for mm -hmm. the uh, arthroplasty, spine and uh, knee and hip joint surgery. We started, yeah. and uh, but the uh, as a result of uh, uh, the clear uh, government control, so uh, the frequency of trauma itself has been decreased significantly. Yes, so yes. The trauma cases, the numbers of trauma cases is very decreasing now in yeah. our Ram center yes and you would you would attribute that yoshi to just the fact that people aren't out on the streets the same way i mean the trauma around the world has changed from high energy being much lower to more mm. of the fragility fracture increasing because injuries are happening at home because people are still at home but they're not yes, driving yes, right. their cars. yeah okay yes, right. okay very very good um, Fascinating information, and I, I can't thank you both enough for taking time to um, give us insight on that information because, um, you know, the world is going through a big change, and I'm hopeful that we will at some point be able to see each other face to face. You know, we've been trying for some time, but we will organize mm -hmm. something, I hope, um, to have you over at least to visit us. I know Natsumi will be coming, spending some time with us, mm -hmm. I hope, soon, um, but we'll have to find some time to do that. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you.